so depressed. I'm not depressed. I'm excited. <laughs> Standing by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mom. I'm just trying to get it set up, so. Okay. Not officially. Oh, yeah. This is fake live. <laughs> yeah. Fake live. So there should be a live video now. Mm -hmm. A slight lag. I just cannot get the videos to switch. But you can hear us. Test is live now. But it just says we'll broadcast. Right? Nope. Okay. It's a slight lag, but there's gonna Great. And let me switch to myself. Hello, hello. There you go. I was gonna say say or do something so we can see how long the lag is. It's way behind. Yeah. That was a little time. Okay. <laughs> But it is worth switching. It's like a good 30 seconds at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I did that. This is like a weird dream. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it sounds Start like. Timer. Oh, because um, we're talking. Like You're not. You I'm the master of the iPad. Oh. Can I download it? Huh? I just want to test audio real quick. Talk for art. So today we're going to use uh, the beautiful noise of it, this eight-piece filling pro block set. We're so excited! Yeah! Yeah! Turn it back up, maybe. <laughs> So we don't have to move the mic. Like You're there, right. I heard him. Right. But we should switch it because she was stronger. Yeah. But yeah. I Let's still make that strong. Stronger. Yeah. yeah. And Maybe we, can we find like a happy medium, like here, or is that? I didn't think he was super low though. Let's switch it. Let's do another test. Yeah. Um, how long? Wait. How long is this last? Definitely. So, 8 inch Swilling Pro bread knife with teeth holding in, in the pinch grip, which means my thumb and my index finger are touching the blade. And I'm over here, we have a question from Amy M, and she's wondering how she can use knives. <laughs> First of all, you should start <laughs> holding them in the proper way. <laughs> Oops, one side of the <laughs> So Amy, the way to hold your chef knife is in the pinch grip, which means your thumb and your index finger are actually on the blade and the other three fingers are loosely around the handle. 
Yeah, we're still <laughs> reliving the past. <laughs> So if you have a question, do we watch, face, look at that corner, or we keep? Okay. Yeah. Because they're gonna be Let's go forward. Yeah. Yeah. You guys ready for? Let me just set up the computer real quick, and then we'll go back. And I imagine I'm just gonna leave the live stream down. So that question I was going to ask at the top, mm -hmm. like we do our intros and then I was going to say, Bernard, before we get started, can you explain what the importance of, you know, proper knife skills are? So should I not and just wait for that first question to come in? Oh, that in? was not a real question. We'll have oh, okay. Okay, you okay. do whatever is in, yeah, we'll okay. have different types of stuff that's not on here. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Designing the space, they asked me, Do you really want all those power outlets? Yes! yes. <laughs> They're even in the ceiling. I know, I saw them! Yeah. <laughs>
Samantha from Bed Bath and Beyond and I'm Bernard from Swilling J Henkels and we are here today to give you a little demo on how to use knives properly now before we get started Bernard I want to ask what is the importance of having proper knife skills first of all it's safe if you have the proper knife skills it makes your prep work way easier and quicker and even it's influencing um, your dish because if you're cutting all the same dices the cooking time it's all even. Right. Yeah. Great. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, and I have this beautiful eight-piece Swilling Pro block set, and it comes with five knives, a honing steel, a pair of scissors, and of course the block. Let me tell you which knives are in the block set. First of all, we have a eight-inch Swilling Pro chef's knife, and this is the most used knife in the kitchen. Then we have a small Japanese style santoku, um, santoku knife which you are using in a chopping motion. Okay. Then it comes with an eight, eight, 6 inch slicer for slicing and carving fish and meat. A small paring knife, whenever you are holding your product in your hands you are using your paring knife. And it comes with an 8 inch chef knife. Oh. Uh, Bread knife. Bread knife. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to tell you something about the Swilling Pro uh, knives because they are different from our other knives. This is a traditional 8 inch chef's knife. It's a forged knife so it comes with the bolster part but it has a straight bolster. This is the Swilling Pro knife. It also comes with the bolster part but it has a curved bolster. And we're going to teach you how to hold your knife which is in the pinch grip. Your thumb and your index finger are actually touching your blade and the other three fingers are loosely around the handle like this. The curved bolster is perfectly supporting this pinch grip and this way the knife really becomes an extension of your arm. That's a great design, it makes it so much easier. It does, it does. Wow, that's great, okay. So. Your 8-inch chef's knife is the most used knife 
in the kitchen. You're using it for your prep work, for your veggies, and we're gonna use this knife in a circular rocking motion. The tip of the knife is slightly curved, which is supporting this rocking motion. We're holding it in a pinch grip. Once again, your thumb and your index finger are on the blade. The tip of your knife is touching your cutting board, and we're gonna use the back part of the blade for cutting. So we're going to start up, we're going to drop our knife, we're going to push it all the way forwards, we're going to lift it, we're going to bring it back and start all over. So this mm. should be a full circle, the circular rocking motion. And I'm not lifting the knife up off no, of the board. The tip of your down. knife should always be touching Got the it. cutting board. So let's make this motion a few times. Great. Ooh, and it's really nice. important <laughs> to move all the way forwards. Yeah. So that smooth. looks great. Great. So let's bring in some produce. I have a stick of celery. Thank you. And oh, I actually think we have a question. Our social media team is here. We're going to move to them. What's up, guys? Hi. We have a question from Susie. And Susie wants to know, she when she holds her, she does kind of a pinch grip. And what she does is she puts her forefinger on top of the blade. Is that a good technique? Cutting technique, or should she be doing something else? Hmm. It would be great, Susie, if you can get rid of this habit because it's sort of blocking your wrist, and in this circular rocking motion, you're using your wrist. Awesome, thank you. Hmm. Back to our celery. So, if we want to make the perfect um, motion, you want to be st steady and straight behind your cutting board. A lot of people place their produce straight on their cutting board and if you want to have a 90 degree angle from your blade towards your product, you will notice that your body will move. Oh yeah. If you place your product in a 45 degree angle, you're able to stand steady and straight behind your cutting board. So once again, the tip is touching your cutting board, we're using the back part of our blade for cutting and we're going to make this circular rocking motion. So oh, Samantha, so see nice. where my produce is. It's on the back of the blade. Oh, the back so end. Try oh, I'm all the way up the, front. Look at that. <laughs> try to use okay, the back end see. of your blade. That's great. Perfect. Awesome. These knives are so smooth. You're rocking it. Oh my gosh, this is great. I need to get myself a pair. <laughs> okay. So the third step will be that we're going to bring in our left hand. To guide our blade because up until now the only thing deciding on thickness was our eye if mm. we're bringing in our left hand we're going to also feel what we are doing okay so your hand should be in a claw hand your oh, pause we have, <laughs> we have one question. question yeah social media team have at it <laughs> hi we have a question I uh, they want to know okay so they're rocking the blade um, how um, this is a question about what is dicing versus uh, chopping. Basically, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Answer the question. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Ready to go. Um, so, back to our left hand. It's in a claw. Your thumb and your pinky are, are behind your front three fingers. Your nails are facing backwards. That's really important. And we're going to use our middle finger as guidance. So as long as all your other fingers are behind this middle finger, you can't cut yourself anymore. Right, and so make I want to keep them back. Okay. Yeah, and make sure your nails are facing backwards. Okay. And now the scary thing is your knife should touch your middle finger. Whoa, okay, <laughs> trust you. <Yeah. laughs> right. And again, make this basic circular rocking motion. And the trick is to walk to bring your knife over the produce and not push your product under your blade. You're actually doing great. Oh, thank you. You learned from one of the best. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> great. All right. So now we're going to move one step further to our small Santoku chopping knife. It's also for your small veggies, and as you can see, it comes with a different blade shape. Mm -hmm. Here we have the curve and the tip. This was perfectly supporting the circular rocking motion, but our Santoko is almost straight. And in using this knife, we're gonna make a chopping motion. 
So you probably can hear the difference. The tip of our knife is not touching our board anymore. We're going to lift it every time we're going to make a cut. Okay, so lifting and not doing Not this making the rocking motion. motion anymore. I have some more celery. I have a question. What are these little ridges here in the knife? Great question. Oh, we call it hollow edges and it allows some air pockets between your blade and your product so it won't stick any, as much. Okay. So they're just ever so slight little pockets. Correct. Oh, we have another question from our social media team. So Kyle, Kyle Ann wants to know how, um, you know, you, you have this chopping motion and you have rocking motion. What is the most, what do chefs do? Or is there a, one way that's better than the other? Basically, Kyle, you use uh, both motions for the same purpose. It's for your prep work, for your veggies, and it's personal preference. Which technique do you like the most? Are you a rocker or are you a chopper? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So let me show you how to chop. We're holding the knife in the same pinch grip as we did before with the German knife. Great. Don't put your finger on the blade like this. The other three fingers are loosely around the handle and we're going to make a chopping motion downwards but also slightly forwards and so Samantha forwards actually meaning towards the front of the cutting board? correct uh -huh. so you're gonna drop it and move slightly forwards and again we're gonna use the back part of our blade and you could use your left hand the same as we did look at this hand I'm making it while making terrible. the rocking motion <laughs> and you hear the difference now you can hear it really hear a chopping motion. Straggler. <laughs> that looked great. Let's clean our cutting boards. Okay. So we can actually use one of the two techniques, the one you prefer, to dice mm -hmm. an onion. And a lot of people start with cutting away the root. Please leave the root on. The root will keep your onion together. Really? Yes. I always cut off both ends. You shouldn't. After today, you don't anymore. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so, we're only going to cut away the tip. Only the one side. Yes. Okay. In this way, we have a flat side. So, we can put our onion on the flat side so it won't roll anymore. It's safe. And we're going to have our <laughs> onion through the root, like this. And start at the tip. Move downwards and slightly forwards again. Because if you're using a longer part of your blade, cutting becomes easier. That looked great. Yeah. Now we're using our paring knife, paring knife. Okay. to remove the skin. But still, our root is on. So which knife did you prefer, the Santoko with the straight blade or the chef's knife with the curve in the tip for the rocking motion? Oh, that's tricky. Probably the chef's knife I would go Let's for. pick our <laughs> chef's knife. Okay. Again, we're going to place our produce in a 45 degree angle. The root is facing away from our body and this time we're going to use the tip of our knife. And the trick is to keep your knife in this angle and don't drop it because your blade is thicker on this side than it is here on the edge side. So if you would drop it, your onion wants to do this and we want to okay. keep the onion together. Right. Okay. So place it in, stay away a quarter inch of the root and pull it out like this. That looks great. Am I holding it with this, my other hand? You can okay? support it with your other hand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to turn the onion like that. And we're going to make two horizontal cuts. One and two. And start off. Yeah, that looks great. One. <laughs> How am I doing? Two. <laughs> Next time, it's easier to start up. So almost oh, up a little bit higher. Of, yeah. Right. So maybe like there would have been, okay, gotcha, Perfect. okay. But as you can see, my hit. onion is still compact. Okay. Now we're going to use the basic rocking motion again. The tip will touch our cutting board. We're going to use the back part of our blade for cutting. 
And we're going to make this circle of rocking motion. And this is the easiest way to dice an onion. And you have it diced on you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Instead of what I usually do is I, oh, one more question. Nicole. All right, Lee wants to know how you guys are not crying right now with a lot of emojis. <laughs> the most yes, important you. thing, Lee, <laughs> is that we are using a sharp knife. And if you're using a sharp knife, you're not crushing your product. So you're really cutting instead of crushing. Wow. Awesome. I didn't realize that, that the sharpness had to do with that. Mm -hmm. huh. A little trick, if you want to move your produce on your board, use the back part of your blade, so not the sharp edge, so your knife stays sharp for longer. It's no wonder my knives at home are just like terrible, because that's, that's what I do, I just scoop it, scoop it, scoop it over. Don't use the back of the knife though. <laughs> are we, is this, I'm cleaning my board now. Yeah, we're going to okay, clean right. our boards. And I have a potato, potato. and we're going to uh, we're gonna use the potato <coughs> and our 8 inch chef's knife to cut brunoise, which are little cubes, and julienne, which are sticks. And that is... It's a French, French term, uh, from the, it's a term from the French cuisine, yes. Ah, okay. So our potato is round, and we want to create a small rectangular out of that. So we're going to start on the long side. Chef's knife. Chef's knife, correct. Start with the tip, push downwards and forwards. Great. And again, we have a flat side. Uh. Turn it on the flat side so it's safe, it can't roll anymore, and now we're going to cut a rectangle out of this potato. Uh, the other side. Uh. You got it? Now we're going to turn it. Oh, so we're basically just slicing the skin. Yeah, we're slicing the skin off. Most of it so off we have all the sides. Okay. a rectangle potato. Beautiful. And now we're going to cut uh, three extremely thin plants. So it should be like as thick as a, a quarter. or okay. yeah. So like this, your eye should be on this side of the blade, that's really important, so you can see what you're doing. Start at the tip, push downwards and forwards, so your plank should be like this thick. You see? Yeah. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Cut really thin planks and cut like three of them. And if you move a little forwards, you're using a longer part of your blade and cutting will become easier. Okay. So downwards and also forwards. Perfect. Okay. I'm noticing I have to catch myself. I keep putting my pointer finger here. Try to hold your knife in the pinch grip. Habit. Yeah. <laughs> so after those three thin planks, we're gonna cut three planks like an eight inch thick. Okay. Like this thick. How am I doing? You're doing great. Is that thick enough? That's perfect, an eight inch. Okay. Yeah, eight inch thick. Great. So we're gonna start with the thinner planks. And again, place it in a 45 degree angle. Today we're just practicing in a restaurant. They will stack those planks. We're only gonna use one. 45 degree angle, the tip is on our cutting board. Use the back part of your knife for cutting and make this circular rocking motion. To get Julienne. Julienne. Yes, we're in France now. <laughs> so this is how it should look like. Look at that. Great. Shoestring French fries. <laughs> so if we take a thicker plank, again 45 degree angle, and we got a little thicker Julienne, like an 8 inch thick. Great. You're almost cutting like a pro. <laughs> almost. <laughs> I know. Turn those, uneven. Turn those sticks. Okay. 
And now we're gonna cut little cubes. Brunoise. Brunoise. I move my food forward, I know I'm not supposed to do that. It's always <laughs> smart to uh, work on an organized cutting board. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're using the center oh, for so cutting and all your prep work is here mm -hmm. on the corner. So that was Julienne and Brunoise. And here we have a tomato. So clean your cutting board so you have enough space. Okay. And now we're gonna um, cut brunoise out of a tomato. And this time we're gonna use our six inch slicer. Big difference between a chef's knife and a slicer is the thickness of the blade. Hmm. The slicer is almost half as thick, you see? Got it. So it will cut way easier through soft and delicate product like a tomato. And actually a tomato is the best test to see if your knife is still sharp. If it runs without any pressure through your tomato, your knife is sharp. If you feel like putting some pressure on your tomato, then you start uh, maintaining your knife. My tomatoes at home always end up a giant pile of mush, mush. because I don't have the proper knife. Look at that. A sharp it's knife so will help you. So make quarters <laughs> of it. Hey guys, do not pay attention to me, keep going. Okay. Great. Half. And try to oh, hold it in the, the pinch grip again. <laughs> yeah, that's our thing today. There we go. And now we're going to use our six inch slicer to remove the seeds. Great. How we're doing? I'm I'm a little slower than you are. <laughs> I practiced a little yesterday. <laughs> Great, almost there. Seeds. Perfect. Seeds. Okay. Now we're gonna change again to a chef's knife, and okay. you can also use the small santoku in the chopping motion. I will use my German eight-inch chef's knife again to first cut julienne out of the tomato, turn it and then cut Brunoise. This, these cubes are perfect for a nice salsa. Oh yeah, because they're just small enough. If but you're you, using you the slicer. Get... And the slicer is for a slicing motion. Oh, I and never moved to the chef's knife. No, you didn't. Uh. <laughs> so pick your preferred knife. You can use your chef's knife or gotcha. use the chopping motion um, with our small sentoku. And then Renoir. Turn them and then make Renoir out of it. And that's a perfect start for your salsa. Cool. Great. So if we do both two or three quarters to over tomato, then we have a nice start for our salsa. And we can mince some cilantro in it. Cilantro, one of my favorite herbs. So good in fresh salsa. Beautiful. And before we start mincing, I'm gonna clean my cutting board because it's wet because of the the toma tomato. a lot of juices from the <laughs> tomatoes. So while we're getting ready with the cilantro, can you give me a little bit of swilling history? Swilling history. So um, we were founded by Peter Henkel in um, 1731. So we are there more than 280 years. So you know what you're doing. Yeah, we know what we're doing. We know what we're talking about. I have some cilantro for you. Okay. And he founded the company in the month of June. And the astrological sign for June is Gemini. Gemini. <laughs> in German, swilling means twins. So whenever you see a two-man logo, it's swilling, the Gemini, the twins. Yeah. So let's get some cilantro. 
only the leaves, so remove the stems. Okay, you've done that for me, thank you. Yeah, and then fold them in your right hand like this. I just want a couple. Yeah. yeah, and make sure your board is dry, otherwise oh. your herbs will be really, really mushy. Don't want mushy herbs. Okay. Great. Turn them. And then I'm going to use a small santoku for this one. Santoku. The chopping motion. Run it once in the chopping motion. Uh, pinch grip. Pinch grip. Mind the pinch grip. <laughs> and now we're going to start mincing like this. And hold your, the tip of your knife with three fingers, your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger. Perfect. Got it. And then just back in the opposite yeah. direction. And you can mince as fine as you want. It's really important to see that it's still dry. Our herbs are still dry. And they didn't become mushy at all. What were you were responsible for picking? Oh. <laughs> Nicole! Yeah. Hey! Okay. We have another question from Sandra. And Sandra, uh, when you were doing the potatoes and doing all the different cuts, they were wondering why you would do something like a brunoise. Like, why would you cut something in perfect little cubes if you're just cooking at home? Um, once again, if they are all the same size, you have the same even cooking time. And also, looks is important. If you want to present this perfect dish, then it's really nice that your cubes are the same size. Great, thanks so much. So we minced some cilantro, we have some onion, then we can also add some avocado, avocado to our salsa. Beautiful. Can you have that rag for me? Can I wipe this down? Definitely. A little bit of salt on this. And I'm going to use the basic knife skills to make nice dices of our avocado. Add them to our tomatoes. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so now basically we used all the knives in our eight piece swilling block set, except for one. And that is our eight inch bread knife. Ah, the bread knife. Yeah. So I have this beautiful piece of bread for you. <gasps> and I have two. And it's important if you're using a bread knife, which comes with teeth, is to use it in a sawing motion. Again, we're going to hold it in the pinch grip and we're going to use a sawing motion, starting at the tip and working all the way towards your... Towards the end. Towards the end. And don't use any downwards pressure at all. Let the knife do the work. So we're not pushing down at all? Not just, at all. Just the sawing back and forth? Yes, and correct. Okay. And use the full length of your blade. Yeah, great. That's like butter, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> <laughs> I like butter. <laughs> So we're not doing a circular motion here. No, just the this is a sawing motion back and forwards using the full length of your blade. Did I do it? Oh. Great. Beautiful. But do we have any more questions? Yes, we do have a question. Um, Sandra, you mentioned from Joe R. He asked, what's the best way to clean your knives? Should they be hand washed or can I put them in the dishwasher? So officially our knives are dishwasher safe, but I wouldn't recommend it because your dishwasher has this tremble and if we have steel on steel, you will damage the edge of your knife. Mm. So I always recommend just wash it with water and soap, dry it, hang it on a, a magnet bar, put it in a beautiful block set, um, and that's the best way to clean and store your knives. Excellent. Thank well, you. I, yeah, thank you. I think that about wraps everything up. I think it does. Thank you yeah. so much, Bernard. Thank you for, thank you for watching. Um, you can find the 
eight piece pro Zwilling set exclusively at Bed Bath and Beyond. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and check out any of our other social media channels. And I think that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Take care. How long was this? I'm ending it from here. Oh, okay. Uh, so just so we have to end it. It's like we have to end it. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, so we have to remember that too. Excellent job. Excellent. Good job. I feel it's hard to make a salsa. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that part. I mean, I feel like if we don't show it, you can still say like, "Thanks for joining. We're gonna, we're about to enjoy this sauce with all this nice stuff we just." Cut up. Come see you guys later. Yeah. What's up? We don't have to show it, or decide if we will say it or not. I can say it, but I feel that you have to get in different bowls and a spoon and.